Good morning guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to take a look at some tips and tricks for uh, the upcoming Alpha 20. I am recording this in 19.6 unfortunately, but I'm fairly sure most of these tips and tricks will still apply as they just released the uh, patch notes and it doesn't seem like there are any major changes to these mechanics I'm going to go over. Um, so yeah, this will apply to new, new players and veteran players as well. Um, I learn new things about this game constantly. I've been playing this game for seven years So I bet there's loads of people out there that have been playing this game for thousands of hours and they may find use of some of these tips So stick around. I'll do it for both uh, new players and veteran players now to keep things very simple I'm just gonna divide these tips and tricks into categories in general trader combat mining and harvesting game stage Little bit of Horde Knight, looting and questing. Since we don't know how building is going to be like in Alpha 20, I will just do the first two tips uh, with the building just to get that over with for new players. So first tip, going into the shapes right here. Uh, this is only 50 shapes, but in Alpha 20, this will be over 1300 shapes. So hold R and click on shapes to go in there. Now, a lot of people, rotate with left click but if you click R you'll actually go the other way and that is the second tip that pretty much cover buildings that's all I'm gonna do uh, that will definitely be a thing in alpha 20 all right moving on to general tips all right my first general tip is gonna be inventory management a lot I see a lot of people just hoard all the items they can possibly find in the game they don't scrap anything I understand for brass is important because you lose a little bit every time you scrap. You lose 25% instead of just putting it right in the forge. But guys, just scrap the brass into a stack. And anything else, like lead, get out of here. Like lead, iron, you know, nitric, coal, all these things. Except for iron, I suppose. You can throw out all these things. Anything that you can mine, just throw it out. Like, it's it's just going to bog you down. There is no reason to have those things. You know, we have lead fishing weights. We have empty cans. Just scrap this as a stack of iron. Just, you know, there's no reason to keep this. Uh, whenever you find glue, just make it into duct tape and have a stack of duct tape instead of having duct tape and glue. Murky water. If you're running around with a with like a hundred empty cans, there's no reason to keep that one murky water. I know this is a big one. People love to hoard their paper, but paper is one of the easiest resources to get a lot of in this game. So there's absolutely no reason to keep that while you're looting. All right, second tip: hot bar items. Just number one rule: just have bandages on your hot bar. Simple as that. Tip number three. Some people don't know how the uh, the heat map works. By the way, if you're absolutely brand new to the game, uh, every time you use a forge, campfire, mixer, you shoot a gun, all those things, it adds heat to the chunk. A chunk is a 16 by 16 area. And you can check that heat by going into DM mode. Now I already have DM on. So you go in F8, F F1, DM, turn it on. And then you click F8. And that'll show your frames on the side there. But if you double click it or you click it one more time, you also see the heat. Uh, it says 0.00% right now. But if I were to get a pistol in here. See, it goes up with every shot. So, how this works, when this reaches 100%, there's a 25% chance that a Screamer will spawn and run to this area. It won't run necessarily, but you get what I mean. Next tip on the list, we have broken workbenches. When they are lootable, you can't use them, they are destroyed. But there's a very high chance that you'll get a, a schematic for the workbench. There's actually a 25% chance to find the uh, schematic in here. So always loot these workbenches whenever you see them. What It could be uh, camp stations, mixers, forges. All those things can give the schematic of the uh, equivalent workbench. You should always loot those. 
bonus tip you can always wrench these as well for forged iron springs mech parts and and some iron for uh, for some early game resources make sure to do that as well all right i already mentioned dm but cm is how you turn on the uh the creative mode so f1 and then cm turn it on you click u to bring it up and there you have the uh the creative menu a lot of people some people new people may not know about this so there you go you got your dms and your cms which is debug mode and creative mode so this is your debug stuff you can fly on h and space go down on c go down really fast you can go into the map control right click to teleport So I'm actually going to go ahead and turn back the day here so we can we can have a little better lighting. Fantastic. All right, for my next tip, I recommend pockets. This is more for of course new players. They don't know about this. Pockets is a is a very nice thing to craft right off the bat. You can craft 3 of these as there are going to be 3 clothing slots, which is the coat, the shirt and the pants. They give an extra encumbrance slot here each. And they're not that difficult to craft. And you don't need a workbench or anything. Definitely make sure to get this. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this is still going to be a thing in Alpha 20. As these slots may change. But I think that it's a change for Alpha 21. So, this will still pretty much be the same. Pockets. Make sure to get them. And, next tip on top of that. I highly recommend looting junkyards. There are two major junkyards you should always loot. They have tons of garbage. Garbage is, you know, poor man's treasure, you know? You got all the great things in there. Duct tape, sewing kits, cloth, leather, you get schematics, you get ammo, you know, what have you. Anything that's really, really good in the early game. So you can get your pockets as well as sewing kits that also comes with it. Uh, next tip, of course, if you are just starting out and you have a decent amount of duct tape, always get a full set of padded armor. Padded armor is amazing. They cost next to nothing. Even though it's a tier 1, they're really good. They get 5 armor each and they have no debuffs. So that's 25 armor. 25% less damage. You can easily get 5 duct tape and 25 cloth uh, on the first day if you loot a junkyard. Alright, next tip. Picking up your crafted workstations. Right here. I have not crafted this. Of course, I cheated in. But this is a working workstation that I placed. As opposed to a broken one. Although you can never pick this up anyway. But just for, uh, for the sake of... Showing that they, they look the same. You want a lane claim block. These have a great use in single player and PvE, not just PvP. You place this down. It's active. You hold E and you can pick it up. Fantastic. Of course, make sure to get anything out in the output here. I'm pretty sure it will go into inventory, but just to be safe, take that out of there. Same thing with if you pick up the forge, take out the uh, the anvil and stuff, the crucible. Next tip, books. People are asking me, why do you know if you have read it or not? There's a little book icon over here. You read that, it's open. This Fireman's Almanac Volume 7, I now know it. I don't know the Volume 1. The book is closed. It's really good to know when you can just read things straight out of the uh, the bookcase when you're looting. Alright, now over to some more advanced general stuff. I learned the other day, the serrated blade. This one. This one. No, this one. It has a 10% chance to cause bleeding on a regular attack. This goes on other things. It goes on... You'd think it would only go on a bladed weapon, but it also goes on knuckles. Well, it, it makes sense that it would go on a spear. Uh, those are the main two things. It also goes on the chainsaw, but chainsaw is not a very good combat weapon. Neither is the spear, though, but it goes on it. And I just want to let you know, the tip here is that the bleed 
the amount of bleed that you can do is actually based on your deep cuts perk. So if you have this at Samurai, you can do seven bleed stacks. You can actually do seven bleed stacks with this on a spear. Now, it's 10% chance, so it's still garbage. I just figured it's a nice little bit of information. Plus, if you want to, you can mod this to 100% and you can do a spear bleed build or a knuckle bleed build. All right, next one. This is not super advanced, but when you are cooking food in the early game, cook boiled meat. Do not get grilled meat. Just compare these stats right here. 10 food, 5 health. 10 food, 15 health. It is three times as good, plus it gives 10 water. But, of course, it costs a bottle of water. And it does consume the jar. Considering how easy it, gets, it is to get jars, how easy it, gets, it is to get jars, it, it's not a problem. They have the same meat cost, 5, but it's three times the healing. So, always do boiled meat, not grilled meat. Next tip. Just so you know, about time, one hour in the game is 2.5 real-time minutes if you're playing on 60-minute days. It is a little bit useful when you're like trying to calculate how long it is till Horde Night or something like that. So if you have time to go get that drink, you know, or something. If you play on multiplayer, of course. Alright, next tip. Fall damage. The player fall damage without any mods or perks, falling from six blocks does no damage. Falling from seven blocks, that's where you start to get hurt. If you fall from eight blocks, you'll probably sprain something. So just so you know, it's really difficult to see the difference between these when you're in houses, but if you want to build a base and you want to have it on like stilts, you know, have the platform, the, the you know, the base level of it be six blocks. It's really going to help you out. You don't have to use your exit. You can just walk out the base and not have to worry. Next tip. Well, it is the same tip. It is about zombie fall damage. I'm not really sure how to properly demonstrate this, but fall damage stops at a third of the zombie's health. It cannot go higher than that. See how it goes. I do have health bars on, so I can probably show you. Let's see. 35 blocks. Yes, 83 seen. That is 30%. So, I thought it was 25, but with testing, it is 35. If you want to have an underground base, this is kind of a solid thing if you want to shave that 30% off. All right, on to a different thing that a lot of people don't know about. It is the perk healing factor. Without any perks, you heal one health every two minutes, so every 120 seconds. This is, you know, a passive effect that always will happen. So whenever you're trying to recover health, you'll start to generate once every two minutes. Every time you do this, you, you actually use food. So leveling this, sure, you're going to heal faster. But you're going to use food every time you heal. So let's say you rush this early game. You get it to animal. You heal one health every 20 seconds. If you constantly take damage, you, this is always going to be ticking. So you're going to be losing food every 20 seconds. This is not recommended to do at all in the early game. This is great for late game when you have established food and all that. But if you go healing factor, you're going to constantly be struggling with food. If, of course, you keep getting hit. If you never get hit, I mean, you, do, you don't have to worry, of course. But it is tied to food. It is a big drawback to this perk. A lot of people don't know this. Now you do. And so the last of my uh, more advanced general tips is going to be for uh, any mod that you put in any weapon. It will increase the damage, the block damage, with 10%. No matter what. Every mod has essentially two effects. The, the first effect is adding 10%. Now, numbers round off. In alpha 20, you'll actually see the uh, the comma, the, the one of the fractions. So you'll, uh, you'll be able to see this a little bit better. But it's always an increase of 20 from the base damage. So let's say this uh, stone axe, it's a primitive one, so it doesn't have range. But let's say we do a stone sledge. Now this thing. 
has a base damage of, I don't know, maybe it's 22, but it rolled 26. So it can it have damage rolls on it, plus, you know, the medium is probably 26. That's the middle, and then it can go down four and can go up four. The base is what it's uh, multiplying with. So let's say the base is 22, or we can actually find out what it is. Let's uh, get some mods. Let's get burning shaft, weighted head. Put this on, you add one mod, it goes up by two. So it's most likely 20 as a base or 22. So it's 20.2 that's been added, but we can't see that. So my point is, you have a primary effect, which is for this one example, you got the, uh, it adds a chance to stun and slow enemies. By the way, this is about a 15% chance, I think. It doesn't show that, but it is 15. And the, the secondary is that it adds 10% damage. So even though the mod itself is useless, let's say I add something like the shovel, uh, the grave digger. The grave digger had absolutely nothing to do on this weapon. You should add it anyway. It adds flat damage. For a final tip in the general category, I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna showcase real quick how to drive the gyrocopter. Uh, a lot of people ask me about this too. They're not really quite sure how it's working. And just line it up. Shift click and lightly tap the space bar. That'll go up. And space bar go, makes it go up like that. So this is what a lot of people do, I suppose. They just hold that. But you gotta flatten out by using C. C makes it flatten out. So go down with C. Go up with space. Take some practice, I suppose, but it's actually kind of easy when you know what buttons to press. And you don't steer with your mouse, you steer with your uh, W, A, S, D keys. So. I'm not, I didn't say I was good at this. I'm just telling you how it goes. Let's do a nice landing here. Oh, terrible landing. All right, now on to a couple just very quick trader hit uh, tricks here. Um, when it comes to min-maxing, when you get, you know, AKs and machine guns and stuff, you make actually more money if you scrap it first. If you're, of course, looking to sell the parts. You get 90 instead of the 40. So anything that's a tier 1 is not worth selling like it is if you want to get rid of it of course it's better to keep the parts but if you really need the money scrap it first and then sell the parts of course anything above it you make more money just you know all right second tip on the trader shift click the machine gun parts shift click shift left click gets all the 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 three parts at the same time instead of having oh, to you policy. click it Check back again, and, and I may have what you're looking for. Uh, what? Yeah, like that. So you don't have to click this button. To save time, you can just shift click to get all four, and then W. Right? So, Fireman's Almanac, shift left click, W. So this way, you can sell really fast. If you want to save time. And now for the last tip. If you have a bunch of mods that you don't use, instead of selling them as they are, they sell for almost nothing, you can put them in the uh, a tier 6. If you have tier 6 you don't want to do, so don't sell the tier 6 as it is. Put them in there. It increases the price by a lot. This is only 40, but if you add it, it is additional 400. So you can really... Just get all the mods you don't want into whatever quality 6 weapon you don't want. It's going to give you a lot more money. Also, of course, last but not least, of course, repair the weapon before you sell it. Alright, and let's move on to combat. Birds do not attack you unless you're above 95% health. So these won't attack me, 
The only time they will attack me is if I get on a bicycle. Or if these are spawned on top of a rooftop, then they will attack me. Let's grab some fat. Eat that. Still not 9%. Uh, 95%. One more. That should be do it. That should do it. Is it less than 95%? Okay, let's try one more. Okay, I'm, I may, my, my stuff may be wrong here. Oh, 90. It is 90%. Okay, my bad. It's 90%. So that's when they attack me. So that's a good thing to know when you're in the desert and the wasteland. Just, if you have full health, you don't have to worry. Alright, for the next tip. Zombies will always path in eight directions. So this is where the zombie- let me kill this one first. This is where the zombie is standing, right? Let's say you're standing over here. Now the zombie will take the shortest path to you. It's not this way. It looks like it could be right to it, right? But what's gonna happen is it's either gonna path this way, like so, and then straight forward. Right? Or it's gonna path straight forward to about here, there, and there, and then like that. Uh, so they will only ever go uh, south. So if you stand right in front of them, they will just go straight for you, of course. South, southwest, west, northwest. Well, you get the point. They can only go in the eight different weather directions. So, you should definitely use this when you are doing melee or whenever you want to line up zombies because this works tremendously well during, let's say, a horde night on the ground. So, let's spawn in a bunch of Arlene's. 25 of them, in fact. Shoot. They're all running. That, see they're pathing very clearly. If I run, see they're all over the place right now. If I run straight northeast, they should all line up. As I turn around, they should be all lined up. And there you have it. That's, that's pretty much how you do Horde Knight on the ground. That's how I do it on the ground. You just pretty much circle back. So, if you find an empty block somewhere in a town, just go from the corners diagonally, back and forth. Whoopsie. Alright, let me show with one zombie first how clearly they will pass. Let me predict how they will pass. Whoops, not that many. So, Arlene is gonna go to about this point. If I stand completely east, she's gonna run down this path, and then straight towards me. Or she's gonna run like that, and then like that. There's only two ways she can go to me. Ah, she's choosing that one straight forward, and then down northeast. Try that again. Ah, she's only picking that spot. Let's try that one more time. Looking west. Okay, it's even more obvious than I thought. The so question is though, if I stand southwest and I spawn her over here, is she going to line up southwest first? So let's break that down. Straight west, obviously she's going to run straight to me. If I spawn her southwest, so pretty much what this concludes, they always focus going the primary directions. North, east, south, west. They prioritize that and then they take the other four when they go over the shortest path. So, pathing is even more obvious than I thought. If I look south, she's over southwest. Yeah, she's running. She was prioritizing north and as she found the conversion point, whatever it's called, 
where it is a straight line. If she goes northeast, that's what she'll do. So she'll, she'll always path the, the primary directions first. And as soon as you line up with the block as we're standing, that's when they turn. That is how simple and predictable the pathing is in this game. And my favorite part here is um, is the sledgehammer. The sledgehammer is the best starter weapon out of all the starter weapons. Tier 1, stone sledge. Spawning a bunch of Arlenes. And of course with that, you always want to go. You start with 4 points. I have accidentally leveled. Okay, you're not part of it. Stop. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. <laughs> The reason why this is so strong is because it has the highest stun chance in the game. And it uses very little stamina for such a heavy weapon. And if you pair this with a sexual Tyrannosaurus, which I always do, you start with four points. I have got an additional level, so I won't use the fifth one. But what I, how I start my runs is I do two levels in strength, two levels in sexual Tyrannosaurus. It gives you athletes incredible. 30% less stamina using power attacks. So, with this, you can just go ham with power attacks. Even though this is insane difficulty, this is working tremendously well. And this is without any perks into, uh, into Sledgehammer itself. Well, that was a lucky proc though. So two hits should always be a knockdown. Two power attacks. Sh look how little HP she has. She's dead on the third. And this is why it's so strong. Super reliable, super safe, because you almost have a guaranteed stun. As long as you're fighting one zombie at a time, you can clear super quickly. And that goes into my next tip about combat. Use power attacks as long as you have stamina, but don't run out of stamina. Switch only to light attacks when you are just on the brink of being completely out of stamina. Because you want to use those power attacks to, to pretty much stutter step the enemy, to do the mini stun. Now, this is more important when you play with running zombies, but it's still good to know even though you play with uh, walking zombies. And let's use up all our stamina. So this guy is definitely tankier. I'm going to waste it by... Yep, pretty much like that. That's when you want to use the light attack. When you're down to 20 stamina, that's when you want to use it. Otherwise, just go for the power attacks. Constantly. This applies to every weapon in the game. Every melee weapon, of course, this is subjective, but how I do melee, power attacks until you are just about to run out. Like, you're, you're essentially one power attack away from running out. That's when you switch to light attacks. If you have to, if you can run away and recover, if you play with, you know, default speed, you don't have to worry. You can just take a step aside, get stamina back, and go back to power attack. And the reason why, but see right here, it's more than double the damage for a power attack. But using a power attack is not double the stamina cost. It's only 50% more the stamina cost. So if you want to min-max on your stamina, use power attacks. And that is to beware of zombies when you're out in the wild. There are a couple of zombies to definitely look out for. Now, I would say the farmer, but the farmer is getting removed in Alpha 20, so definitely not him. Oh, he's right over there, too. Isn't that kind of funny? Uh, so we got the biker. We have the construction zombie, which is called U Utility Worker. That's right, Utility. Uh, that one. And the reason why... The biker has a massive amount of health, as you can see, while using the health bar mod. Uh, plus he has, I think, 25 armor. The construction zombie is like a normal zombie with armor, just like, a, pretty much like a military zombie. But this guy has an insane amount of block damage. So when you see these during Horde Night, you definitely want to make sure to focus fire these guys. They have like 400% of a normal zombie or something similar like that. Bonus tip. Or, well, I would just find out about. These values won't be completely accurate in Alpha 20. Because apparently they're adding random health points. Like, random HP. Which, this is probably going to be the middle part. And then it's going to be plus or negative 100 health. Or something like that. I don't know. We haven't tested it yet. 
but something like that is probably going to be the case. So some zombies like this one will be even tankier. And lastly, before we're done, I'm just going to quickly quickly show how you can utilize Molotovs very effectively. You of course want to group them up, group the zombies up. Uh, you want to kite them to, let's say, any door. And then you can just drop it right on the door. They, I don't know why they're not attacking. There we go. On the door. Let's say there are 20 zombies here. They will all be set on fire. You pretty much have a guaranteed hit if you utilize the doors properly. Of course, you don't have to use, you know, doors. But it is very effective. What you want to do otherwise is that you want to circle the zombies, make sure they get nice and grouped up, and then drop it on the ground as you turn like that. And that should pretty much set everyone on fire. Now, ignore the fact that they're running. It's going to be easier when they're not running, obviously. Uh, but that's the idea. Just group them up, just round them up, and throw them all top. Very, very, very effective. Uh, fire damage the the molotov fire damage don't give two shits about armor so they'll all be dying now they'll all be dying oh they're not all dying but they're not all dying i don't know i don't know why they didn't take okay i didn't hit all of them apparently. and i also hit myself that's of course something you're gonna be worried about always have water on your hot bar bonus tip if you're gonna use molotovs of course all right, let's move on to a different category, mining and harvesting. First one on the list is I want to talk about the, uh, the harvesting mods. There are four harvesting mods right here. <clears throat> this one gives 50% more damage against 15% damage against wood. There are only one type of wood. Iron Breaker mod gives 15% more damage against iron. Yes. But it also, it doesn't say, give extra damage to lead. Because these are the same group of ores. So you know that by using a tool and you'll hit them both. This is iron. This is lead. They have exactly the same sound. Then you have the Gravedigger mod. 15% more damage against dirt. That is not just dirt. That is also, well, dirt, sand, well, gravel, and sand. I think that's sand. This should be sand. Have all the same sound. Last but not least, and this would uh, consider be the best of the all, of all of them, is more damage against stone. Well, stone is great, but there's a lot of resources here. They're all considered stone. Oh well, they're in the same category. And you just listen for the sound: stone, nitrate, coal, oil shale. They're all the same. So. This mod is amazing. Every time you're mining, whenever you have it. So don't miss skimp out on that thinking it was just for stone. Also, bonus tip to this. Iron Breaker also works when wrenching cars. This mod does not only, like we talked about before, add the additional block damage. The, the secondary. But it, the, the, the primary does affect the wrench. So... Because a car is iron. Which segues me into the next tip. Use power attacks when you wrench cars. It will give you more stuff. Also, considering every other tool in the game halts your stamina regen when you do power attacks, wrenches does not. Now, the only downside to this... If you are specifically looking for engines and batteries, which probably most people are doing, power attacks isn't the best way. But if you still want to use the power attack, like so, make sure to use the light attack before you break it. That will proc engines and batteries.
every time you do a stage. So, pretty much two power attacks, two light attacks. Of course, this will differ from whatever stuff you do here. Yeah, now, I didn't get a single engine or battery, so I don't know if that was just insane bad luck there, but uh, you get the point. Power attacks are pretty amazing, especially when you wrench dozens of cars, you know, it, it'll save you a lot of time. Especially since when I personally wrench cars, it's mostly because I want gas, oil, or springs. Those are the most valuable parts. Alright, next tip. How to make a mine shaft. Some people just dig straight down, straight down and do a ladder. I say, don't do that. Do this instead. Find out where the directions are, weather directions. You get, you want to go west, right? Put it there. Now, turn west. Let's use the steel shovel. Uh, you take out the one and you take out the two, like so, in a row. And then you start on the second one below it. And you keep going. You need to be crouched. You keep on going down. You gotta hit it right there between the two blocks. This way, you'll make a perfect 45 degree angle going down. This is good for two reasons. You don't have to bother with a mine shaft, like by building ladders and all that. But, this protects you against zombies. Let me show you. Whoops! Okay, that was a bad, <laughs> bad example. <laughs> Let's do one guy. Hello. So he sees me, I go down here. Let's say I'm sitting here mining. Well, right now he's- yes, so he's dropping down. He can't get to me. So he has to destroy every block above me in order to get to me. And let's say like you're 10 blocks further than this, you have plenty of time to react and kill them. Of course, your entrance will eventually get ruined over time. Also, this is a, like we said before, a utility zombie. They have insane block damage, so that's why it was digging so fast. Now the perfect angle there. Spawn in... Let's do Bo. Hey Bo. So I'm into here. Minding my own business, of course. Note that as you get to the stone layer, it's gonna be even better. So this could be a roaming horde right now. As long as you have a gun, or you don't even have to use a gun. You can use, uh, you can hit their knees. They will slide down a little bit every time though, but that's fine. If they, of course. So this is better with something that doesn't utilize, uh, stuns. But mostly just flat damage, like a knife would be good here. Stuff like that. Of course, it's bugged now, though, but that's not part of it. So, bonus tip to this. When you're making a mine, if you're just, of course, looking to not mine anything specific, if you just want to make a mine shaft, make sure you dig past a dirt layer, go maybe five, six layers of stone, and then you can just go to town in any direction. I can't tell you exactly how b wide you can make it, but you can make it quite wide without any supports because you're so deep down there's so much structural support you would have to dig a 30 40 wide mine shaft down there in all directions in order to collapse it of course don't do that it's risky but the point is you can make it very wide without having to bother with structural support you don't have to worry about that stuff i see a lot of people Constantly build like their little, you know, little pillars inside. You don't need to, as long as it's further down. A different example is where people mostly mine is in veins. Let's say, save that for a bonus tip, because he, this segues perfectly into the next one. How to find ore using the map. Now, you have all these spots here. These colors will differ in from biome to biome, but we'll take the uh, this biome f as an example. These boulders, these bigger gray spots here, these are boulders. The smaller ones, this is nitrate. The black one over here, that is coal. Down here, this is either lead or iron. I'm gonna guess that is lead. It's more brownish for the iron. So iron should be... Uh, 
that could be iron. It's always the same size. The boulders are always a little bit bigger. And the other gray spots, those are, well, I honestly don't know what they are. I, I am 99% sure this will transfer over into Alpha 20. So let's just go here. Let's teleport. Do we have the coal right here? Yes, right there. Oh, there was bonus right next to it. Lead. Didn't even see that. Fantastic. So, this is what people probably mostly want to do when they uh, make the mineshaft. They want to do it close to resources. So, that idea before doesn't really work as well. But, this is what I would recommend. Of course, mine this out. Mine it out. And there's always four blocks underneath it. That will be... Okay, in this direction. That will be that resource. And then there's one block that will go straight down. Now, you can probably guess that this vein is somewhere down here. You know, maybe five, six, seven blocks down. Could go in any direction, really. But, in order to get make a great mineshaft entrance, start a little further away. Where we go? We're looking east right now. Looking east. We know it's there. Oh, for actually, for example, this is this is kind of a great example of how you could just mine straight in here. But for the sake of, let's say that this is a flat area. You would want to go with a perfect degree. Right here. Crouching, of course. Go down, and you start seeing gravel, and that's where you know you're in the right spot. So here's, there's all this coal, right here. And now, instead of making a big quarry, or some easy way for the zombies to get into, you still have this sort of entrance. Fantastic. And of course, once you've gotten deep enough, follow the gravel in any direction to follow the coal, and you'll be fine. Also, there's a pretty high chance that there are other, you know, ores connected to the one ore. You can get lucky and find all four in the same, which is actually quite common, so not that lucky, in fact. I mean, the lead is right here. One of these will most likely lead to iron, and the other one will probably lead to, to nitrate. Alright, for the last tip of mining slash harvesting, pallets. Pallets are incredibly valuable, definitely in the early game when you want to gather resources. It is by far the fastest way. So starting from the right... This is cement. You want to use shovels on this. Nice amount. This is cobblestone. You still want to use a shovel. This is wood, and this pallet is terrible. Don't worry about this. This is, you probably want to use an axe on this, but there's like no yield on this one. So don't bother with that one. But this one, amazing. This is pure stone. Use the pickaxe, it will give you a lot of stone. 50 stone and last but not least you want to use an axe or a shovel here. This is paper uh, Not some not too exciting since paper is so easy to get everywhere, but yeah and last but not least I forgot to put this down the wood one that is the proper one instead of this one You want to use the fire axe on this of course? wood doesn't seem like a lot but if you consider the fact that that was three hits let's go to this one this is a smaller one 900 that is 110 wood now that is almost four times as good but that was way more than four times the hits so of course if you want to gather a lot of wood of course chop woods down uh, trees down but when you're on the go and you walk past one of those uh, wilderness POIs to have those like stacks of wood right up next to it, make sure to get it. It's a nice time saver to get a little bit of wood. It will add up. It will. Trust me. All right, since Alpha 20 is pretty much just around the corner, I'm going to get through these last ones real quick. So game stage. What is game stage? Game stage is the same as the loot bonus. First tip. Second tip. What is game stage? This is the calculation. You got your C level, your character level, plus the days you have played the game. Negative one, because day one doesn't count, and then negative two for every death that you have. 
and then everything is multiplied by your difficulty, which is 1.2. Now, this used to be a thing in Alpha 18 where your multiplier would change depending on difficulty. In 19, they changed it so it's always 1.2, and that will also be the case for Alpha 20. So this is the calculation that you can do. This is how, if you want to understand it a little bit further. Alright, just to make things more clear, this equation is not completely accurate because the negative 2 you get from deaths can only go to as far as so that the days go to zero. So it can never go below your character level. Your game stage can never go below it. And that's why my game stage with my 7 deaths are 4. Because your level will always determine the floor of your game stage. So yes, you get additional game stage per days you have survived, but if you are dying more than every other day, you will never get more game stage than your level. Of course, there is the 1.2, so eventually you will get some. You know, at level 10 you will have 12. And also to get this calculation correctly, you have to do it after 7 a.m. because that is the starting time for everything to be accurate. So. I suppose it's a it's extra tip. If you loot a chest after 7 a.m., you will have additional game stage, which equals more loot. How does loot bonus really work though? And what is Lucky Looter? What is up with that perk? Lucky Looter, it adds 5% loot bonus, and this goes up to 25%. So this is a 25% multiplier on top of your entire game stage, and that is your loot bonus. You can't actually see your loot bonus, you can only see your game stage, and then you have to do the math on top of the game stage. Like, how you calculate your game stage isn't as important as how you calculate the loot bonus. They are the same thing, but they're also not the same thing. So especially in Alpha 20, they're actually adding to trying to separate them a little bit further. Even though we probably won't get a setting that's called loot bonus. It's still based on game stage. But we're also adding something else. And it's going to look like this. Most likely. So biome and POI will also be a multiplier on top of the entire thing. I'm not sure if this is exactly how it's going to look like. But this is what I'm guessing it's going to look like. So... Pretty much, you have your calculation of your game stage. Then at the end here, you have a calculation of what biome you're in and what POI you're in. And this will be a multiplier on top of everything. So for example, Wasteland will be the highest multiplier. We'll see enough 20 if this is going to be a separate uh, stat you can see. But I don't think so. I think you just have to do this calculation. I could be wrong though. We'll see when it's out. So what does game stage actually do? Well, they do two things for now. They affect loot and they affect zombies. So first things first, zombies. There are three types of zombies, three tiers of zombies. This may be an additional fourth tier in Alpha 20. Uh, we'll have to see about that. But essentially it breaks down as your starting tier, which is... The same for zombies, the zero tier and the one tier is the same. So that's the regular zombie starting from game stage one, going all the way to 50, 52. So once you get to 52, that's when you unlock the feral, the feral version that will start spawning inside POIs. Not all the time, but it will. you will start to see it after 50 or so. That is the tier two zombie. Now, you can still see ferals at night. This game stage only affects what's inside buildings. All right, and then for the third tier is 90 plus, And that's where you're going to start seeing the irrated zombies. And of course, the higher you go, the more common these will be. And at this point, it's very common to see ferals, you know. And it's just going to go crazier. And I'm assuming that's going to be a, an additional tier to these zombies. Or essentially, the tier 3 will be the new... The new zombies, like the spider zombie, the um, uh, the mutated zombie, stuff like that. That's probably going to be instead of the irrated zombies, because they are eventually phasing those out. And yeah, that's pretty much how zombies will scale on top of your game stage. Sure, the higher you go, also the higher type of zombie will spawn. 
you know, you'll get like bikers more often, the more, the higher you get in the certain tier. So like, let's say you're just about to push into the 90s to start getting, you know, those really scary zombies. That's where you're going to start seeing like feral bikers and stuff like that. Now, let's go over to loot. Before we get into the uh, the weapons and how that is affected by game stage, I just want to go over quickly the difference between tiers and quality. Tiers is the grouping of a weapon, whereas quality is the actual number associated with the weapon. So this is a quality 2, but it is a tier 1 weapon. And this is how I have laid it out for you. You got your primitive weapons, your tier 1 weapons, your tier 2 weapons, and your tier 3 weapons. Ignore the quality right now, that's not part of it. So, tier 1 weapons are unlocked at the same as zombies. Uh, well, 0 and 1 is the same, will be the regular zombie, this is the regular part. The, the, the pistol is unlocked with, you know, 10, 12 or so, and the higher you go, the higher the quality will be. So, at, by the round, you start seeing ferals. This is around 50 game stage. You're going to start seeing magnums. This is, of course, going to be a quality one going up as you go up in the game stage. And around this time, it shouldn't be too uncommon to find a quality six pistol. And, of course, as we get to the tier three, that's going to be 90 plus. And it's the same idea. The Desert Vulture is sort of like a one of the very late games. So I would say it's a little, it's like a hidden tier 4. But I, it's probably here in tier 3. So here you have the different ones laid out. It looks a little bit different if you go over here. Uh, robotics doesn't have a tier 2. Same thing with Archery. So there's a big gap here between the, um, the tier 1 and tier 3. Which similarly look the same as it does in uh, with weapons. There are no tier twos. You have a lot of tier ones. Uh, you have a lot of tier zeros. You have a lot of tier ones, and then there's this big gap before you get to tier threes. So by the time you should get to tier threes, you should be finding all sorts of quality six. Now there's also one more thing that is affected by game stage, and that is wandering hordes. The Wandering Hordes work like this. If you care to check the XML, but this is kind of interesting, a little bit of information right here. Wandering Hordes can trigger around once every day, right? And what group, what Wandering Horde will be spawned is completely based solely on your game stage. There is one spawn group for every game stage leading up to 50. All the way down here to 50, which is zombie bears, by the way, and then it loops over. If you have between 1 and 3 game stage, you'll get this as your first horde. A lot of people manage to get to 04, though, and this is the big one. That's the dog spawn. That's why a lot of people seem to get this on, like, day 2 and wondering why are the, like, a dog spawn. If you haven't had a wandering horde yet, check your game stage. If it is four, you know, just have a lookout for that. And of course, like I mentioned, it loops over. So this happens every 50. So at four, 54, 104, 154, and so on. So there are some really important ones to have to be looked out for. And that is, of course, the vulture group. That's a good one. The wolf one. Uh, there's another zombie dog also at 20, by the way. Yeah, it pretty much loops sooner than that. I forgot to realize. I forgot to tell you that. So it would be a 20, a 70, and then there's another one right here, which is 34, and then it would be 84. But the ones to look out for, of course, like I mentioned, is pretty much everyone that's, uh, you know, an, an animal spawn. But you do have the the crazy ones. But yeah, the big, big, big one at the, is at the very end. That's where you get that rare zombie bear group because there are only one of those in the entire list. So this can only proc every 50. So at 50, 100, 150, 200, look out for these things. These are dangerous. And if you're curious where to find this list, go into your 70 die folder in your Steam library. Go into data, config, and you can go to game stages and then scroll down and you'll find this. All right, let's move on to some Horde Night tips real quick. I only have two for you. I could probably tell you more things. Well, that would be diving too deep, I feel. So, one thing that people don't know about, if you play on random hordes, you don't know when the Horde Night's gonna happen. One way to check, 
which of course you can you have the warning thing so you'll know in the morning but there's one way to know even sooner exactly when the time switches when it, there's midnight into a new day if there is Horde Night that night, which will be in 2200, the sky will light up red like a Horde Night for about 10 seconds. And my other tip for Horde Night is pretty much, there are three waves of the Horde, and it's calculated based on your game stage as well. I don't know exactly the calculation, but there's a fixed amount of zombies that will be spawned based on your game stage, and they will always be in waves of three, past i think the first horde there's the first horde may not get three waves but you will always get three waves as you go above i think it's above like game stage 10 or something you will always have where you always have three waves of hordes so what's what's going to happen is you get the first wave and they come from northwest they're always going to come from the northwest until they don't then they're going to come from somewhere else until they don't and then there's a third way where they come from somewhere else and they will always spawn in one direction at a time okay the last few real quick looting questing i've realized I've, I've mentioned some looting my biggest loot tip for new players when you're not it could be very worthwhile to know whether is it worth going into this building is it worth dropping into this hole well there's a lot of traps in this game so one thing I always do when I play, I tend to play a lot of permadeath, so this is very important. When you're in doubt, know your way out. Speed questing, my next, next tip. If you're interested in being extremely effective with increasing your, your reputation with the trader, even though a reputation is a hidden stat, in Alpha 20 it's going to be more important to get the reputation because the reputation is going to be based on on each trader so in alpha 19 you can do 10 tier ones and that will give you the trader to trader quest which will take you to the next trader and that trader will have tier twos in alpha 20 you're gonna actually have to earn all those tiers with each and every trader so you may want to go really crazy on questing if you want to really reach pro progress on all these traders so so if you're interested in how to get your progress really fast, what I tend to do is I make a little base right outside my trader, which is just a two by two box and you put two chests on it and you just go in, grab a quest, go to do the quest, come back, drop your loot, repeat. Of course, if you get a lot of stuff over at the trader, my next tip, get drop chests. Put those outside a house, you know, I usually tend to do it in intersections. I put it down, I save a waypoint, I do the X and I do uh, drop chest. So you have it there, you loot this block area right here. You put all your stuff in there if you have things you don't want to bring back. Because you want to be fast, right? So you want to go back uh, and continue doing questing. And drop your main stuff over here and just keep on going. Keep on going. Of course, I highly recommend doing always the closest quest, whether it is a clear, a fetch, or a buried. Alright, so my last and final tip for speed questing is how to dig out these treasures faster. In Alpha 20, it's a really silly thing as if you step in the s middle of the circle and you go southwest, it's very, very high chance that it's right in this corner. That is not the case for Alpha 20, though. In Alpha 20, uh, I would resort to my old tactic of digging these, which is you pretty much mark it out with frames like this. So you have, you know, you can see if this shrinks. So what I tend to do is I start in one side of it. Let's say I start here and I just keep on digging, right? Just keep on digging down, usually just straight down. Not straight down, I usually do that angle like I do when I do mines. I go down to the stone block, and then I keep going forward. So now it's shrunk, and you see where it shrunk and where it didn't. So, it's definitely not in this direction. Definitely not northeast. And funny thing, like I just mentioned, it looks like it's gonna be in the southwest. Because it has not shrunk here nor here maybe a little bit there so it's probably going to be a little bit more towards the south let's do 10 more just to see 
And then we hit the other side, and now it's shrunk again. It shrinks around, I think it's every 10 blocks. Alright, seems to be staying true. That is going southwest. So what you could do at this point, you could probably just dig straight down, and you'd find it. And there it shrunk, and it is in the southwest, right down here. So not exactly where I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be more over there. But it was fairly close. It was just a few blocks away. This will still apply in Alpha 20. I highly recommend using this strategy. And for my very last tip uh, that I forgot to do in general is pretty much how do you get these boxes? <clears throat> you craft storage boxes. And that'll give you this one. If you go into the shapes like I first mentioned, you have a second one called writable box. You can hold E, go to edit, and then you can type whatever you want. And there's two types of big storage boxes. Now, in Alpha 20, this version, the writable one, will be automatically selected. So, you don't have to worry about finding this one, but this is at least... This exists. It's really good. Really good stuff to mark your loot. It's the biggest possible container. And also to show how you... These are the paintable ones. These ones. The best way to get paint is to scrap dye so you find clothing you take the dye off you paint you scrap it you get 15 paint you can get the paintbrush which is super cheap super cheap get that hold it just like you do with the shapes go into materials and you select which one you want you can of course color whatever you want but uh, these are made for the storage boxes so right click to paint it left click to remove it those are the two storage boxes i would highly recommend you using all right, there you have it guys all the tips and tricks that I can come up with now for alpha That's gonna be fitting for alpha 20. I hope you learned something um, I will probably do an updated version on this video when I've played some more alpha 20 But th these things will maybe not all work like I mentioned in the, f in the uh, at the start But I'm fairly certain though that most will still work so guys, if you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. I will be releasing more videos like this throughout Alpha 20. And I'll also will be streaming the Alpha 20 weekend starting in just a few hours. Or the, uh, this probably already started by the time this video is out. I really hope you learned something, guys. Check me out at twitch.tv slash Jonah Birch to get more 7 Days to Die content. See you on the stream. Take care.